In Thomas Eliot's The Book Named the Governor, the author embarks on a nuanced exploration of governance, education, and ethical conduct. Published in 1531, this seminal work serves as a guidebook for rulers, emphasizing the moral and intellectual qualities necessary for effective leadership. Eliot's treatise unfolds through a dialogue between the characters of Thomas and Antonio. This conversational format allows Eliot to convey his ideas in a more accessible manner, making complex concepts comprehensible to a wider audience. Through this dialogue, Eliot delves into multifaceted aspects of governance, education, and individual virtue. Central to Eliot's thesis is the idea that an effective governor must possess not only intellectual prowess but also moral rectitude. He asserts that education is pivotal in shaping a virtuous leader. Eliot champions a holistic education that encompasses both the liberal arts and moral instruction. He contends that a well-rounded education is indispensable for developing the moral fiber essential for governance. Eliot's emphasis on the moral dimension of leadership is evident in his discussion of virtues. He delineates the cardinal virtues, justice, prudence, fortitude, and temperance, as essential qualities for a governor. Eliot's portrayal of the governor as a paragon of virtue underscores the significance of ethical conduct in governance. Furthermore, Eliot advocates for the governor's mastery of rhetoric. He believes that eloquence and persuasive speech are indispensable tools for a leader. However, Eliot's stance on rhetoric is not merely about ornate speech, rather, he emphasizes the ethical use of rhetoric to persuade and inspire, emphasizing the importance of truth and integrity in communication. In addition to educational and moral prerequisites, Eliot stresses the significance of experience in governance. He asserts that practical experience complements theoretical knowledge, shaping a governor's decision-making abilities. Eliot advocates for a balanced approach that integrates theoretical learning with practical wisdom derived from experience. Moreover, the governor offers insights into the complexities of political power. Eliot acknowledges the challenges inherent in governance, highlighting the governor's responsibility to balance the interests of different societal factions. He underscores the importance of prudent decision-making, considering the welfare of the governed above personal interests. Eliot's work extends beyond the individual governor to encompass the broader societal impact of effective governance. He contends that good governance fosters societal harmony and prosperity. Through just and wise governance, Eliot envisions a society characterized by order, justice, and progress. The governor remains relevant centuries after its publication due to its timeless insights into leadership and governance. Eliot's emphasis on the fusion of intellectual acumen, moral virtues, and practical experience resonates with contemporary discussions on effective leadership. In conclusion, Thomas Eliot's The Book Named the Governor is a seminal work that offers a comprehensive blueprint for effective governance. Through a dialogue format, Eliot expounds on the multifaceted qualities required of a governor, advocating for a blend of education, moral virtues, rhetorical skills, and practical experience. His treatise transcends its historical context, offering enduring insights into the essence of ethical and proficient leadership.